I don't what I don't get it. What is it? I'll give you a demonstration. Oh! <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Oh my god. This is your friendly neighborhood aid. Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, I am sitting back down with Tangil to react to some sex toys, but hopefully it will also be educational. I may cringe or make noises or get embarrassed. It's only because I'm not used to this stuff, but deep down, I know these things are important to talk about. Um, obviously, there will be no shaming of any kind here. Uh, but you will get my genuine reactions uh, because some things will be shocking to me. Uh, if you are easily triggered, I would highly recommend not watching this episode as I have no idea where this is going. I just know there's sex toys. And uh, <laughs> uh, Angela has seen me cringe already with some other stuff. So, and she thinks I'll, you know, I don't know. I don't think I'll pass out, but we <laughs> will see. Uh, you very well might. Um, for those who didn't see our previous chat earlier today, um, I am an asexual who explored BDSM um, as a way to figure out whether or not my asexuality was actually asexuality or whether it was that I just hadn't found my kink and something that had turned me on. And, and I really did enjoy it. I, I enjoyed the performance. I ended up as a dom, even though I'm naturally very submissive. And I, I do still get a lot of mental enjoyment out of things, just not necessarily physical. Um, so I would consider myself a sex repulsed um, asexual. I don't want people touching me or doing things to me, but it doesn't mean I can't get pleasure out of um, still participating in some things and still feeling attractive or or just doing stuff, right. feeling part of the community and of all you for, sex freaks. <laughs> just for just for clarity, um, mm -hmm. do you like? I, I, and if this is a dumb question, I apologize. But no. do you like? orgasm or does it even ever feel good no so every night again i'll take her out for a run to see if she's working um so i will try masturbating to see if i'll get any response whatsoever and mm, probably 99 times out of 100 it's still no okay um, yeah man yeah so I, I just, real. I've given up. Yeah. Yeah. The body just doesn't work. The body's not interested. Uh, the brain's mostly not interested either. Um, but there are certain things that will trigger responses in me. Uh, I'm particularly sensitive to certain voices. If anybody here is the same as me, then they might know of uh, one person called Corpse Husband who put out a song called E-Girls and it will it just floors me. If I was ever going to have sex again, it would be with that man. Well, with his voice at least. <laughs> have you ever heard it? You must go no, and listen I to haven't. it. Oh, the first line is something like, um, choke me like you hate me and you love me. And that pretty much sums up BDSM for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, so you've had an interesting sex life where I have had I... A, a repressed sex life. Yeah, and, and I came from a pretty prudish background and pretty, pr pretty prudish attitudes and, you know, a great deal of inhibition and all of those things. But I had to explore it because it was causing trouble within my relationships. And, and I guess in the BDSM community, it's all very open because you're negotiating everything up front. Uh, as we touched on, it's not something that you do in normal life. You don't go and get drunk and go home with someone and say, hey, before we start, these are all the things I like, all the things I don't, and here's my safe. You just don't do that. Wouldn't you fumble it be around. And, if you did, though? 
Oh, hell yes. Hell yes. Yeah. Um, you and I also discussed the fact that the BDS, BDSM has a bit of a um, an underground, edgy sort of reputation when in fact yeah. it's nonsense. Most of it's harmless fun, people just messing about, experimenting with some kinky stuff and having a great time. Kink with collars is what I call it. Um, very, if, yeah. If, if that's no big deal, mm. I have no idea what I'm in for right now. Uh, you don't. <laughs> as I said earlier, that was like the, uh, you know, the, the, the thing, I thought that was the most intense. No. So we also discussed pain play, uh, impact play and impact and play, pain play. And I just wanted to get it clear that you need an analogy. So a, a good analogy to pain is tickling. So some people are super ticklish and even the lightest tickle can feel like torture. And other people like me, I'm actually rather insensitive to tickling. You'd have to, you just about have to break my ribs to get a tickle response from me. Um, so the fact that I only have to touch you lightly to get a tickle response, but for me, you'd have to touch me quite harshly. It doesn't mean I'm into some heavy play. So think of the same thing with pain. Some people might only need the tiniest bit of pain to respond, and that's probably most people, but other people just don't feel pain the same way we do. Uh, other people do. So they need a much more intense level of play. And though it seems edgy, they're still only feeling the same level of pain. It's it's subjective. It's contextual. That's see, that's that's so, so interesting because I like yeah uh, the way I see it, I would think like like getting jabbed with a sharp object is going to just feel intense to anyone, but no, some people just don't have that. And we also discussed the fact that it can be really good for people with anxiety because any kind of um, attention and focus being drawn to a certain body part, for example, pegs, clips, um, spanking, anything like that can draw the brain out of its mess and get it focused onto one body part. And that can be really effective. And there are also people who enjoy pain because they have other problems with their bodies and pharmaceuticals have failed to to be effective anymore and by playing around with pain they can actually get natural endorphins and get some relief sometimes and some people like it as part of humiliation and degradation and things like that so yeah so there's all sorts of different things i tended to attract um masochists because i do i've always i always did non-sexual domination Okay, so, so top, uh, real quick for clarity, what is the difference between masochist and sadist? The sadist likes to give the pain, the masochist likes to receive the pain. Got it, okay. Right, so I'm a sadistic dominatrix, <laughs> um, and again, because I didn't want to participate in anything sexual, obviously the most likely, uh, the best match for me was just a masochist sub. So that meant a lot of pain play and a lot of humiliation, degradation play, a lot of dress up play, a lot of role play, things like that. And I've told you you're scary. I <laughs> can you not see why I think my instincts were right. But I'm not scary. All I do is laugh. Even as a dom, I laugh. So I, I don't do the traditional um, dungeon dom look. I've never dressed in leather. I, I actually go for a bit more of a rockabilly look when I play and, you know, in bright, red polka dot dresses and all I do is laugh hysterically at people because I think they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, would you um, like to jump into it? Yeah, I really would. And I'm just trying to think of what we could ease you in with. Oh man, this is. All right. So no, no, I'm, I'm just going to take it really easy to start with. So here's something really sweet. Just yeah, panties. And that is just a neck collar. Oh. And it stops some movement. It prohibits some movement. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that can be fun um, when you're playing about and you, you can tie someone up and you can stop them from moving and do nasty things to them and they can't see or know what is coming. Oh, Ooh, nope. That can be I, fun. I have to see. Okay. I have some trust issues like sure for for instance like i while on one end the thought of being like handcuffed is intriguing 
I yeah. don't trust anybody enough. Like I'm just like, nope. Like sure. I can, that, and I also can't have my eyes closed uh, in certain situations. Yep. It's like I just, yep. I don't trust people. Well, that's the whole thing. You can't play with people you don't trust. And I, I'd be the first person to say, if you couldn't be blindfolded and handcuffed with someone, then you don't, <laughs> just don't. You, you would never be that stupid. Um, you never put yourself into a vulnerable position. You would only do these things with people you know and trust. But there's also things you can do around that. Actually, that's really interesting about some gag things um, that I'll show you. Uh, so... There are other ways to do it. So even if you don't like being cuffed, so I've got these little handcuffs, so they're gorgeous, and I can lock you in them and you can attach a chain separately so that it's not built in. So for someone who was scared, I could actually lock you into the handcuffs so that they'd st stayed on, but I could just put a string, like a cotton string onto the chain so you could easily break it apart if you wanted to. Okay. So that would give you some confidence. Um, and these are the sorts of things you work with with your subs. So if they're nervous and scared, you can still simulate the experience, but give them their safety out. And as a, a top, you should always be working with those things. So some people don't like ball gags in their mouth. So there's all sorts of other things that you can do if you if they want to experience what it's like to still be bound facially, um, but not have that. So I've got a couple of different things. Okay, what's that? Oh, oh, oh wrong way. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. One of the most popular things for me. What's it called? Uh, that's a, called a spider gag. So that actually just keeps the mouth open so that you can insert things. Uh, I've also got, sorry, I'm disappearing, but I've got rather a large kit By the way, here. <laughs> just decided to do this actually last minute i was like oh my god i want to do it uh uh and she was willing to do it right now so yeah um which means so i haven't really laid everything out this, but, this oh. Vern is still staring at me i hope i don't get in any trouble what's staring at you Vern. oh <laughs> the overseer Oh, no. I've also got um, what looks like a little uh, horse bit. Oh, hang on. There it is. No, there it's not. Anyway, it's a straight piece of rubber, like something that goes into a horse's mouth so they don't get the sensation of choking and that gets hooked up. Um, so here's something. I don't know if you've seen one of these. Okay. Wait. Hang on. I'm guessing that goes on a soft penis. It does. This is for Wait, men who. So what happens if you get <laughs> aroused? You get an ouchie. <laughs> oh. oh. This is for men who enjoy being in chastity. And this is actually a really popular thing. This is a very, very common fetish. Uh, by being in chastity, you're essentially kept in a high state of arousal at all times. So it's like being in the middle of foreplay, but all day, every day. Hmm. So it has been described to me. So this is one of probably, the, in my experience, one of the second most common fetishes aside from feet. Really? Yeah, you'd be surprised at how common this is. So in my experience, submissive males generally like chastity, being forced to dress in women's underwear and forced by sexual behaviour, which of course isn't forced because it's with their consent, but right. they like that whole role play of being forced. Hence that spider gag with their mouth open. <laughs> so yeah, no, I don't want to do it. <laughs> But of course, I want to do it. I'm I'm still stuck on the thought of getting aroused while having that thing on. Yeah, well, and that's the point of the top. And that's to get them as aroused as you possibly can, so they suffer as as much as you can make them. <laughs> oh my god! Hence, all my giggling. I talk, I'm <laughs> I'm terrible. I, I'm an awful person, and I'm sure I'm going to hell. Uh, hang on, I'll, I'll try and. Put something up so you can see it more clearly. 
Oh, uh, what? Is, can you bring it closer? Wait, what is that? What is that? What I is have it? literally no idea. What is it? Does this help? <laughs> Wait a second. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Oh, does it go on the breast? It can go anywhere that it would essentially fit. But yeah, technically, I have two of them and you can put them on there. And these particular clips, clover clips, will actually get tighter as they pull. And then you screw it up and you can stretch them way up. Like stretch your nipples? Yeah. And it doesn't have to be painful, but you can certainly make it that way. That sounds like it could get painful. It Anything you leave on too long. So if you know, like, I, I'm very big on education. So you should know before you play what you can do and for how long. So you should never leave anything on that's got tension or um, restrict, like restrict someone's blood flow. Uh, I tend to stick to under a minute. Uh, I think someone says 10 minutes or something. I, I don't do that. Because even after one minute, once you release that, the pain is excruciating. Really? It's, yeah. It's, which is great fun to then press later if you want to torment them. But, yeah. So, it can be one question. Can that tool be used on both uh, people Men and women, less yes. than people without breasts? Of course. But, yeah. Okay. Anything that you can attach. You can attach th that particular thing. You could attach it to anything, any bit of skin anywhere. That okay. wouldn't matter. You could do it to a lip. A nose. Oh, okay. Yeah, depending on what they like. Now, this one needs a bit of content. This is hard. This is upside down. I. You got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, does uh, one end, like, is it for a person with a vagina and. Uh, and an anus, yes. And an anus? Yes, and it can be quite uncomfortable or comfortable, depending on the person. That? Yeah. Looks fairly uh, thick. Uh, that is. That, that's a little bit brutal, that one. <laughs> oh, here's something fun. This is fun. What's Give that? Give a break from the horror. We talked about pet play. Didn't we? Or did you and Hannah yeah. talk about pet play? Yes, we had uh, talked about pet play. So oh, no, often wait, in class, no, that was secular sexuality. Oh, was it? Um, running. Sometimes when you go to clubs, you'll see all the pets running around with their tail butt plugs. Wait, butt plug? Uh huh. Mine. Ha I haven't got a, mine attached to a butt plug at the moment, but oh, yes, that's a that's something I used to give out as gifts to pets because they're really difficult to find. You can't often find those such cute little things. Okay. I mean, it looks like it could actually be like a really good internal jaw massager. <laughs> Especially like for, for someone like me who clenches his jaw. That oh, would sweetie. Work. Wrong end, sweetheart. Wrong end. What the <laughs> And that's unisex. So what, what hole do we all share in common? And there's no danger in like, no. really? Really. So does it just, I'm sorry, I'm trying to like. Okay. So this can be, it just goes up there. Okay. And this can, um, you can put a rope on the end to attach around the neck or to a ceiling hook or anything to immobilize the person. For a normal adult, there's no danger with that. Oh, here's something fun. <laughs> I'm scared of what you say is going to be fun. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is fun. This is fun. I'm not, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to mix it up a little bit because some of the things I have are a little bit scary and ouchy but this one's just plain old fun so obviously because i'm into what i'm into i have a lot of things that are just for binding and and for um for restraining someone so that's not fun you don't need to see all the ropes and chains and sorry what is that 
there's an attachment that goes on the end and it goes. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's fun. That's really cool. Yeah. That's a. That seems a, like it's a powerful apparatus. Um, it is, but it's fairly safe to use. So it doesn't have a huge um, oscillation measure. So it, it only goes around that far. So you can't impale yourself or anything like that. Ah, okay. It's not dangerous. It's pretty cool. Um, is it used both vaginally and anally? Yep. You can use it however you like. And you can have any attachment on it you like. So whatever you want to put on it is up to you. So we talked about clips and things like that. I've, I've got a multitude of chains and clips and oh this one's fun Oops. what's that that's a little nipple clamp oh yeah that's just a little fun thing um we talked about these things earlier so, so that's a three piece Interesting. Okay. Um, yep. it, is the bottom one a clamp too? Yes. Or is it... they, huh? Yep. They all clamp. Hmm. So nipples to clitoris or nipples to penis or testicles, anything like that. And that it can actually create um, a, not immobility, but restricted mobility. Got it. Which well, is sorry, what's this um, called? Um, well, they're just alleg alligator clips in a chain. I don't know what you would call it. Um, nothing exciting. This one might be a little okay. Warning. What? Wait, is that like a, uh, okay, is that what like they use uh, to, to? Yes, to, it's you know, a speculum. Manage? I'm sorry, oh, yeah, I'm trying can... to be as mature as possible. <laughs> with this you, can, you can use oh. them anally too, but yeah, vaginally, preferably. I wouldn't use that anally myself. No, that seems like it would... Uh... It hurt. Uh, yeah, I I'm really fussy about what goes in butts. Um, I am a huge advocate of glass for butts, uh, proper, expensive, well-made glass. I'll show you something to do with that. Sorry, so wait, what is that? This is for electroplay. Oh, those look like they're rubber. Are they, they metal or they what are, are they? They're rubber and they ah. go around the testicles and penis. And it can be a very light. Remember what I told you, 90% of BDSM is light, fun, stimulating play. That's light? It's not. Yes, you can do it so it's just a, a lovely little buzz. And you can do it so the person jumps out of their skin. It's up to you. But most people that are involved in this stuff, we're talking about low to medium play. Okay. I know very few people who actually go full bore on this sort of stuff and who are actually hardcore. Uh, maybe this is a dumb question, but how can they be electrical if they're made out of rubber? Um, I don't know, but it works. Oh, okay. Need an electrician right now. Or I need an electrician. Knows. I do. So here's something interesting. This actually pairs well, hang on a sec, with this. Hang on. Oh, no, getting the no camera right. right. Do you know what this is? Wait, is that like saran wrap? Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is a hugely fun game. You'd hate it. 
Um, it's mummification. So you literally wrap someone up from top to bottom in saran wrap. We call it glad wrap here. Okay. Um, and then if you, uh, this is a breathing apparatus. So you can cover their entire heads and that's like a face mask there. And then the tube comes out and you can mess around with breath play. Oh. And then if you want to scare the shit out of them, remember BDSM is about atmosphere. You don't actually have to do anything scary. You just have to create an atmosphere of fear. So if I want to scare them, then I start cutting the saran wrap with this. Oh, that thing looks sharp. Mm, it's an exacto knife. So the whole idea is to create this atmosphere and show them this, when in fact I've got safety shears, and that's what I use to cut. <laughs> oh, okay. right? So I show them this, and then I use the safety equipment to actually do the cutting. That's smart. Yeah, because it's all about safety and security and not risking things. No, because yeah, you, can, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, you can't anticipate someone's fear reactions ever. They might jump and that would just slice them open. So you oh, never yeah. do that. Yeah. So it's all about pretending and role playing and getting that thing going. Right. which is exciting. Now, I've got one here that this is the one I was worried about um, showing you. Um, this makes most men queasy. You know, real quick, before you show me. Yeah. What's funny is our episode, I, 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 it, it will be on YouTube Sunday, but I have mm -hmm. to put a trigger warning in it, obviously. Yes. And now my second one with you, I have to put a trigger <laughs> warning as well. Well, just stop calling me Tangela and call me Trigger. <laughs> okay. Right. This is what are you going to do to me? I'm, uh, this one really makes men queasy, so I do apologise. I don't what I don't get it. What is it? I'll give you a demonstration. Are you okay? <laughs> oh my god. I told you, I said I'm not taking liability if you faint. <laughs> Enter at your own risk. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. I love your reactions. Oh hilarious. I would have so much fun with you as a dom. I wouldn't have to do a thing. I'd just have to, just have to threaten and I'd get the reactions that I wanted. I am coming to America and I'm gonna dom you soon. Oh my god. <laughs> I would be so beat red and terrified. You would. You would. But in fact, all my subs love me because I actually give them a really nice time. I don't just terrify them, of course, otherwise they'd never come back. So, yeah, these are called urethral sounds. And in fact, they are used for people who have um, blockages in their urethra. And they generally start. So lots of men have these. Um, lots of men have to have this done uh, when they get scar tissue on the urethra. And they start with little ones and stretch them out and get bigger and bigger. Or it's done under anaesthetic by a doctor. And what was discovered is that in most men, yeah, it seems awful and frightening and painful and wrong. It just feels wrong. But for some men, it turned out it was really pleasurable. Remember I said everything is subjective. And for some people, it doesn't hurt. Quite the opposite. They find it incredibly stimulating. So really? for some people, it okay. tickles and it's stimulating and it's as exciting as having sex. Holy shit. Yeah, they get the same feeling. So it's not that, hey, this guy wants this awful feeling of this urethral sound going in and feeling awful. No, they're actually finding it really pleasant. Interesting. Yeah. And what's it called? A urethral sound, sounding. It's called sounding. Oh, thank you. I just got a coffee delivered. Thank you. 
<laughs> I just got it coffee. It sounds so painful, but um... it isn't for many people. It's really pleasurable, and they said. It, one person said it's like scratching an itch. Like if you had your arm in plaster and you stuck a knitting needle down to scratch an itch. Oh my god! We need that clipped. <laughs> The knitting needle down the plaster, the plaster. Did you hear me correctly? When yes. you have a plaster on and you stick a knitting needle down to scratch the itch, they said that's what it feels like. It's like a, a nice, it's like it's scratching an itch and it's lovely. Well, I'm glad it helped some people. <laughs> You're hilarious. You're killing me, man. Killing me. Um. Let me see. What else can I ski with? No, I look, I think for men, that's probably the, my most scary thing. I would hate to see what's scarier. Oh, no, if I've got way scarier anything. things. They just don't look scary. Uh, oh, actually, it's a good thing I'm wearing a black top. Wait, I've seen one of those. Mm -hmm. They do that for, like, scar tissue. Um, yeah, they can do. Yeah. And wounds and stuff. And like, uh, like I had one of those for my, uh, elbow after I, so I had surgery, um, mm -hmm. here and, uh, uh, like for the scarring, I yeah. used one of those. Yeah. You can use them on meat too. <laughs> so does it, does it like, I don't know. That one actually looks more heavy duty. So every, uh, so it's called a Wartenberg wheel and it can be whatever you want it to be. It can be beautiful light stimulation where it doesn't hurt, or I can dig it in and make you bleed. Depends on what you're Ow. into. Most people. So one of my, probably one of my favourite things to do is called sensory deprivation. So I tie you up, I blindfold you, I put earbuds in and play music. Oh, and nope. Nope. so you can't hear, see or speak and or move. And then I make you feel lovely. I just do beautiful, lovely, soft things. I'll tickle you with a feather. I'll run. I've got some little, um, cute little claws. Hang on a sec. Oh, I've loaned them out, actually. I've loaned out my claws. So you've got, I've got some little claws, that, little metal claws that go over and you run them gently down and get goosebumpies and everyone's feeling relaxed and cute. And then I might introduce, this is what I normally do on a first session. And then I might... Um, introduce like the tiniest little bit of pain, like I might just do a little flick or I might scare them into thinking that I'm going to flog them by running the flogger down their body and then just doing a little flick. Um, and you tease around the genitals and around any erogenous zones and they're going out of their mind. Um, and then I might just slap them on the genitals and say, right, that's it, off you go. <laughs> So it's all about the teasing and the taunting and having fun. So, but with my masochist subs, obviously I'll tease them and taunt them and I'll let them watch because that's when I bring out the the hardcore gear and and tell them what I'm going to do to them. But then I'll blindfold them again too before I do it. Ooh, yeah, I the the blindfold like so the I like. I think the only time I like like a sensory deprivation is if I'm in the tub, with the door closed, you know, mm -hmm. l lights off, music blaring, like yeah. that I really enjoy. But if I had to do that around somebody, I don't think I actually trust anybody enough. Like right. that. If you were in a in a community with me for a year, you knew all the people I'd played with. I sign. I get you to write. So I actually issue a, um, it, it's called an activity list and it tells me all the things that you will do and all the things that you won't do. I get that list. I agree to your list that I will not go outside of that. We set up everything that you're comfortable with. So I put the handcuffs on you that have a cotton tie so that you can break them at any moment. I have the blindfold on you and I tell you 
that there will be no pain play at all in this session. Okay. And I can give you multiple references from people who have played with me. So that's no, usually I, what happens. I don't doubt you, but I'm even like yeah. talking like close friends. Like I'm really weird. Like when it comes to my like personal space and sure. like even the idea of being like blindfolded. Um, yeah. So and, then if, if you, you didn't like, want to be blindfolded, then maybe I would just tell you to pull your cap down a little bit lower. Cause I don't want, I, I want you to experience total relaxation and if you're looking to see what I'm doing and you can see me pick up a feather then you know a feather's coming I don't want you to know what's coming I've already promised you I'm not going to hurt you I just want you to feel sensation and that's not unusual for me because when someone first plays with me I want to establish trust so I will never break my word if I tell them that's what's happening that's what's going to happen and I will always leave them begging for more and that's the whole purpose. I want to torture them. I want them to be so horny that they would jump on the end of a, a, a bed knob and <laughs> I won't do it. <laughs> Depriving them is the fun part because I'm a sadist. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. You are even more scary now. I'm evil. It's true. I'm oh, evil. Yeah. But but I'm friendly evil. Obviously, I would never get any enjoyment. This is I would I talked to you about being a neighborhood sadist. Yeah, <laughs> I am what I would refer to as a service top. So I don't have any domination desires of my own. I want to do what people want me to do. So okay. if if somebody didn't want me to do something, I would get no pleasure out of it at all. I would hate that. Um, so I want their list and I want them to be the most creative, um, I want it to be the most creative, enjoyable thing. So that's how I get my subness satisfied by being a top who organizes an event essentially. Okay. So I'm in control, but I'm still getting my subbiness satisfied. Yeah. Man, you had an interesting life and how long have you <sighs> done that? Um, on and off since I was 18. You started at 18? I did. And I had a really bad experience, which kept me out of the scene for a very long time. And that's why I came in with a vision to help subs, female subs, because navigating FetLife, um, navigating just the community in itself is a really difficult thing. And knowing who you can trust and who you can't, and it, it's just so hard. It's so hard. And to be honest, I think there are probably less douchebags in the BDSM community than there are in the average population of nightclubbing. Okay. But the douches are still there. And oh, I can imagine. Yeah. So I, I had a friend that was into more aggressive rough sex. And she started like seeing this guy and he was doing a severe trigger warning what could only be described as sexual abuse because he was going harder and harder uh and she had had more than one conversation with him saying it was getting too rough it was too painful uh one time she almost passed out because he had the belt around her neck so tight um and she didn't consent to any of that and she felt guilty because she's like she didn't want her partner to think she he, she was boring so she was letting this and some of the slapping and stuff slide out, out of fear of her partner leaving her because she wasn't exciting enough and to that me is that's the biggest difference between what what you do and people like that is consent yeah. And going over what you do want and don't want is crucial. And most importantly, not violating the trust. Like, yeah, if somebody doesn't want the, to run or yeah. you're hurting them in a bad way, you need to stop. Yeah, that, that's that's just got nothing to do with BDSM. That, that is just people hiding behind BDSM um, to be abusers. And that's going to happen with that person in or out in a vanilla relationship or otherwise that person's got no concern about crossing people's boundaries. So right. 
yeah. So I don't have a lot of good experiences with uh, male doms. I that's why I I was dead set on creating a community. So if anybody who's experimenting with fat life and um, BDSM, a really good a, a good way to get a, have a good chance of getting a good dom is to look for a switch, someone who does both that will submit and dominate. Any dom that says they will not submit, run. Run as far as you can. Now, that's, really? not, that's not going to always be the case. There will be exceptions for people who will only dom, who will also be really great. But if you're just going off the first meeting and looking at jumping in or whatever, no. Unless you've spent a really long time and looked at their references and been in, you know, in groups where they participate, run. A switch knows what it's like to be on the bottom and on the top, and they're much more likely to be people who will respect your boundaries and things like that. So I don't even need to know what someone's likes and dislikes are or their boundaries are, because as a dom, as I play, I look, I look and I ask. So things like, I'll say between one and 10, what's your number? So if I'm doing impact play, for example, and they'll give me a number. And if the, the number's nine, I know, okay, they're at the end of their ability. Um, and I will check in constantly. Body language is a fantastic way. If they're moaning and enjoying, you know things are good. If they've gone quiet or stiffened, you've just got to be on alert all the time. And right. I think that was a big advantage in being asexual because I'm not getting carried away with my own sexual desires and things. Mm. I'm completely open to watching and, and um, know what's going on. So I had one woman who loved impact play, didn't trust any men. So she'd come to me for impact play. One of the other things, I, well, at least one of the things I learned um, mm -hmm. is the importance of aftercare. I don't know much, but um making sure the person feels safe and secure both during and after and um yeah, yeah i i have uh, <laughs> i have uh, i don't have the same views as everybody so because i'm a sadistic dom part of that is throwing someone out without um aftercare the aftercare comes a day later so okay. how did you go? Because, uh, yeah, throwing them out without any aftercare is part of being a sadist. Um, but definitely yeah. the next day, following up and taking an interest in their real life. We also discussed that what happens in the bedroom shouldn't reflect real life in any way, shape or form. So I should be able to abuse you verbally and that shouldn't have any relation to what I actually think of you as a human in real life. Because if there is, we shouldn't be playing. If I actually think you're some piece of shit, we should that be playing. That would be so hard for me to separate that. Well, you have to because it, that's the whole thing. You go to the bedroom and you want to have a release from everyday life. You don't want to be proper. You want to be, let cut loose, run wild, get messy and sloppy and bathe in each other's sweat and get rough and say whatever comes out of your mouth, not be constrained by propriet propriety all the time. You want to cut loose. And if some, if I want to be called a fucking cock whore, that's my prerogative. But if I think that you actually think that about me in real life, I don't want you in my bedroom. I want someone who knows that, who has great respect for me, who loves me, who appreciates me and knows that that's just a fantasy in there. And that's it. It only applies to the bedroom and it has no relation to reality. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I mean, there is just, I'm working on the sex thing. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I see, uh, I, I, yeah, never mind. I can't talk about it just because I, I need to set some boundaries first before I start talking about, uh, yeah, sure. And look, this is the, but the, that was a hurdle I had with a lot of people um, in discussing certain types of play and humiliation, degradation things, and even things like restraints. People have a mental blank. And as I keep telling them, one is reality, one is role play. 
BDSM, sex and kink a play. Cut loose, jump on the swings, go down the slide. It doesn't mean you're immature and ridiculous when you're not in the playground, does it? It just means you've cut loose in one area for one set period of time and then life goes back to normal when you get out of that bedroom. And, you know, I'm not a sadist in my real life. I am exactly the opposite. (laughs) You're like super, super nice. I Look, I'm a real mum figure. I'm pet crazy. I look after everyone. I'm a real caregiver. Um, I'm the exact opposite. And I probably wouldn't even be a sadist if I didn't find it so hilarious and people didn't want it. You know, they want it. I find it funny. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So is there anything else uh, before we wrap up that we didn't cover? Uh, A multitude of things, a multitude of things. But I I, I fear for your health and safety. So (laughs) (laughs) There's more? Oh, good Lord, we could talk about this for days and we wouldn't get to the end of it. Yeah, there's some really hot topics and I, I really like to, I would really like to cross them, but they evoke really bad reactions in people, so we won't touch on them today. We could, you know, depending on how well this is, res- people respond to this, and mm. if you're interested in a part two, uh, sure. let us know in the comments and we could di- dive deeper um, and apparently go even more extreme. Let us know if you would like Ethan to act out any of the activities that I suggest in out. real life. No. <laughs> I'll get Hannah to bind him <laughs> and I'll instruct her and she can do the things to him. Vote oh, for no. that. <laughs> I don't think Thomas Westbrook would allow that. And that's my co-host. That would be Oh, so come on, effective. Thomas. Thomas can join in. <laughs> no! I can instruct from afar. I've done that many a time. <laughs> you know, I am not going to be the the sexual experimentation of Thomas. Oh, come Hannah. on, come on. <laughs> Anyways, I hope I hope everyone enjoyed us, but enjoyed this. But yeah, let us know if you want uh, part two. Uh, yeah. Oh well, that it could get more intense. And uh, yeah, I can show you some even more intense toys. Wait, I thought we got through them. There's more? Oh, God, no, no. Of course there's more. Okay, we're doing a part two. We have okay. to do a part two. Um, thank you to my uh, top tier patrons, Cindy Plaza, Kenneth Leonard, Kathy Leto, Jump and Shoot, Oz, Secular Rarity, Kianta and Fava Beans, Philip Leach, uh, Caitlin Beyond, Toast, Richard Gilliver, Sunset Sarge, Kyle Brewer. Thank you all. And Tangel. Thank you for making me cringe and, and providing a <laughs> fairly edu- a very educational interview. And I'll keep my urethral sounds to myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good night. <laughs>